Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar on data-driven decisions and building a, a data value chain. Before we kick, commence the webinar, I'd like to go through a little bit of housekeeping with you. In the there is a Q&A section where you, you may enter throughout the course of the content as displayed. Feel free to ask as many questions as you wish, and we'll address them in the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. My, my name is and I am the Mid-Market Account Executive for Looker for the Nordic market. And today, I'm joined by my two colleagues, uh, and of course, our fabulous customer in Falcon.io. Gentlemen, if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Sure, I'm Nick Nolan. Um, I have been managing five trans growth in the Nordics for the last year. Um, I've met some of you before. I'm looking forward to telling you a bit more about five today. <clears throat> I think Nicholas might be a little bit shy, but Nicholas Wagner is also on Oops. the call. Sorry, hi guys. <laughs> I, was, I was still on, still on mute there. Sorry for that. Um, so Nicholas Wagner, hi guys. Sorry, I'm a business intelligence manager for Falcon.io, and I'm here to talk about uh, how we're using Fivetran and Looker for the past couple of years already to uh, help us make data-driven decisions. Great so Great introduction, gentlemen. I'm now going to move on to the agenda for today. So folks, as you can see, we have a very clean cut agenda. We have our Looker overview, which will take roughly 10 minutes, followed by Nick taking over for a five turn overview for 10 minutes. Uh, and then I suppose the meat of the agenda and where we really want to focus on is of course, Nick's section uh, on Falcon.io. And as, as mentioned, we'll finish up with a... So to start, uh, this is our Looker overview. Um, and I'd like to think of Looker as as, uh, on a constant mission. And this mission has always been to empower people through the smarter use of data. And how we've been doing this has evolved over the years in order to help as many um, and many more companies in order to have intelligent data and have, to have easier access to data. We've over uh, sorry, 2,000 customers uh, with, with Looker today, um, all of which that are harnessing the power of their data to empower their people to drive successful business outcomes and deliver better experiences for their customers. And the need for better customer experiences has, has very much so been the catalyst for digital transformation as you know, any, any leading enterprise, but also any commercial, any serious commercial business around the world. And the Looker platform's ability to deliver on this timely actionable insight requirement and infused data requirement has been very much um, a central part of the digital transformation and the go-to choice for these companies. And of course, even though we are part of um, the Google Cloud Platform, we are, we are of course part of Google, um, we remain cloud agnostic, meaning that regardless of whether or not you're on Google BigQuery, on Amazon AWS, Snowflake Azure, we can work with you in order to deliver your own you know, business-focused catalog list for, for, for data analytics. Two of the most common issues that we face on a day-to-day -day basis um, are the data, data breadlines and data chaos that our analysts, our scientists, or you know, our, our, our data enthusiasts uh, come, come in constant contact with. And this is typically, typically sought out for, for the companies that have yet to move into what we call the third wave of analytics, or the third wave of BI. And they are suffering. So time and time again, we hear of you know, data customers that have to wait days, weeks, or even months for any meaningful insight. Or worse still is that once they have crunched the numbers them, you know, themselves in the disparate workbooks or uh, through the, the limited automations that, that a business may have, they get different answers for the same questions, leading to a lot of confusion and distrust in data, which ultimately doesn't lead to a data-driven culture or uh, the business utilizing a system as a single source of truth. How we typically view this um, comes into three categories. You have uh, a data analyst, or a data, a data explorer, or a data consumer. And Looker looks to resolve those two issues of data breadlines and data chaos by utilizing your modern, utilizing your fast power database with our modern BI stack in a very Data governed manner, and we'll touch on this this manner in the scalability in in the following two slides. 
And all, all the while, this is utilizing the most modern cloud technology um, using agile management for updates using metadata frameworks with a robust suite of APIs and modern workflows. Um, now, I'm sure you're going to have questions about this as we go through the presentation, so do feel free to pop in as many as you wish. When you think about those three segments that I've just covered off, when you combine them all together, what does it give you? Well, it gives you the look platform, cloud native analytics platform that enables secure access to real time data when and where you need it in a scalable, governed, agile mannerism. And it's not just suitable for, for one particular sector or vertical. It is acceptable and scalable on many verticals. And you're going to see that when we go through the infrastructure slide as, as such. So at the bottom, you can see that we have the various different SaaS or IAS information, information systems, all centralized within your fast powered database, whether it be BigQuery or, you know, or, or Amazon or Snowflake. Is that Looker's agile modeling layer rests on top of that database and extract uh, 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 and doesn't extract information as a typical uh, as a typical SQL tool or, or BI tool does. In essence, it queries it using our Look ML. And Look ML is our is our is our Looker app, is our is, is our SQL abstract. Um, it, this is very much the secret sauce of what makes Looker a viable, scalable system for any business that's serious about analytics. It gives you governed metrics that your analysts or your scientists can decide what the non-technical business users see. Best-in-class APIs, we have one of the most robust suites available to the market, meaning that if you wish to send, send or receive information, it can do so. Its in-database capabilities are extremely flexible, have three different layers, our browse, explore, and develop layer for the various different categories of analyst, explorer, or consumer. It's fully Git version controlled, meaning that as you work up new, new queries or write new, new SQL code before pushing into production, you can test and validate in order to ensure that what you're moving into, into the production order is, is the correct thing to do. And we're incredibly secure in that you can, you can decide who has access to what uh, at a row level detail. And of course, we're cloud native. And you might be thinking, okay, well, you've talked about how you're relevant in multiple sectors and multiple verticals, can you give me examples? Yes, we can. Um, for example, our modern beyond analytics is applied very well in The Economist, where they apply it to have a holistic understanding of the customers with a 360 degree view across channels such as web, app, print, and such. So they can tell the lifetime value, churn rates, what are you know the hottest trending articles, etc. And they have they have they have heat maps to prove that. In Namely, you have customers accessing reports and dashboards in order to better understand the staffing needs and trends, which is an integral, integral part of their business. We do have multiple other um, use cases for Integrated Insight with Stripe, who, who, whose sales representatives have, uh, have a deeper understanding of the context on customer calls and are able to utilize this information in order to understand exactly how deals are progressing or how pipelines should, should be managed. In sales loft, they reduce churn with automated and email follow-ups for success managers based on customer health. So they are effectively using Looker as an early warning system for whenever something something could apparently go wrong in an in an account. And then lastly, we have our, our custom applications, and this is whereby you can create fantastic uh, fantastic uh, web-based applications uh, or or embed Looker within within your own customer por custom portals in order to extract and get valuable insight on customers. And this, this could be a, obviously a free service where you can monetize it to open up new revenue streams. Really, the possibilities of Looker and the Looker platform are incredible. If you look at the architecture and everything I've said to date, it really comes down to three layers. It's a modern approach to data analytics requiring you know, modern technology foundations. Um, and this comes down to your, your in-database architecture. So our in-database in, in, in architecture leverages the power of your fast power database. Um, and this allows us to have the best live connection that you could possibly require to the databases, which provides a complete view of, of your business data. Our semantic modeling layer, as I've mentioned, is based on, is based on LookML. And the fact that it is an abstract of SQL means that most people can pick it up within an hour, allowing for truly scalable, governed uh, growth within your data analytics team. 
And lastly, our API first extensibility. Our robust API suite means that you can connect to, to pretty much any third party technology out there in order to drive a data, data, data driven culture. We do, of course, have a, a number of logos that are represented within the Nordic market. Um, and you can proudly see that we have Falcon up there in the top right hand corner. But to kind of reiterate what we have mentioned throughout these slides here is that we are applicable to any and all verticals, any and all segments. And that if you are interested in having a conversation with me about Looker, you can feel free to reach out afterwards or I can reach out to you. So Nick, I think that's it. I'll pass over to you. Great, thanks, Mark. Um, okay, so just one of the, those of you who are interested in, in hearing what Mark has said there and looking at Looker and the power of building on your data are probably thinking a little bit about, well, I have data infrastructure in place at the minute, and I have a warehouse at the minute, but you know, traditionally where bottlenecks have occurred is getting that data into a central um, location where you can build on where you can build on top of that data and view it with visualization tool. And that's where Fivetran comes in. Um, Fivetran is a SaaS-based tool for that has pre-built connectors to bring data from hundreds of sources into um, all popular warehouses and into other into other databases where data can be prepared for analysis. So a little bit of background on Fivetran. Um, we have just passed 1,000 customers globally um, with some of our global customers here on the right. A little later on, I'll talk more about our Nordic customers. Um, just to give a bit of credence to how much data we sync um, on, a monthly debt, on a monthly basis for our customers, um, about 2 trillion rows um, of data that we, that we deal with. And what that means is we're constantly um, dealing with new problems that come up with connectors. Um, and every time we solve a problem with a connector, and that's a problem that doesn't crop up again. Um, so what that means is that we have unparalleled reliability and scalability for you um, in, in connecting two different sources and bring them into a warehouse. Um, we're a 2019 Deloitte Fast 500 award winner. Um, we're well funded, so we're you know we're not we're not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, and we came we came from 20 from Y Combinator in 20, in, in 2012. Um, and we've been voted one of the best places, or one of the best cloud computing places to work. And um, we have Oakland in California, um, with another office in Denver in Colorado, um, and we have offices in Bangalore and, of course, in Dublin, where I am now. Um, and if you take it from us, we or if you don't want to, you want to take it from our customers, um, we are rated 4.5 um, for customers who would recommend us to other and um, to their peers. <laughs> So continuing on, where's the opportunity here? And um, as we kind of head into the, the times we're dealing with right now, data-driven businesses are more competitive. And um, a lot of these figures are from before the, the, current, the current crisis, but I think in the times we're looking at now, they're more and uh, more relevant than ever. And data-driven businesses are 178% more likely to grow revenue. They're 240% more likely to have a competitive advantage. And while we don't know that if there's 1.8 trillion and um, it's still it's still going to apply now, I think it is very clear to say that companies that have really have a feel for where their data is um, and, and where where their advantages or where their opportunities still lie are going to be the ones that are going to be able to weather and um, weather the, the current situation best. The, the traditional problem that Five Trans solves is this idea of fragmented insights and redundant tooling. And um, companies were using custom code to get data from marketing sources into into central sources or into, into a central database, using workflow tools to centralize sales data into a CRM, or bringing siloed files into financial systems. And what this created was there's just multiple integration tools with, with um, and it created excess cost and complex complexity with no central source of truth to really understand what's going on in different departments around your business, whether that's marketing, sales, or finance. How Fivetran helps with this problem is we connect to all of your sources, all of your databases, maybe your Salesforce, NetSuite, and Facebook, Google Ads, and, and we bring them all into your warehouse. And we do it in a consistent way. So your data is delivered to your warehouse in a columnar format that's ready for analysis. And we build out, um, we build out extensive schema diagrams and how we interpret APIs um, and deliver data that's just ready for insight immediately. And that kind of feeds into what the central idea of Fivetran is. is it, Data engineers are highly skilled, and they should be spending time working on actually working with data, not corralling it and bringing it into a source, um, or sorry, bringing it into a warehouse. And they should be spending time on working on actually manipulating that data and, dry, and deriving insights from it. And with the idea being that you can get all that data, or a complete view of that data in a, in a performant warehouse, and then 
have a central source of truth for that data and use a tool like Looker on top of that data. And as I'm sure all of you are aware, um, all, of these, all of these steps below come into play when you're bringing in data from a source into a warehouse. You have to pull the data from the source, you have to audit it, you have to clean it, you have to model it, and you have to validate it for correct, correctness, and then you need to store it in a warehouse. And all of that is, while that's the initial time that's spent on doing that, there's also uh, the work that is required for ongoing maintenance, whether that is schema changes, schema migration, uh, managing incremental loads, and recovering from failure. Um, and from speaking to a lot of our customers who moved to, who have moved to Fivetran, they were estimating that prior to using Fivetran, um, their data teams were spending 40% of their resources on pipeline maintenance alone. <laughs> but what Fivetran does is streams line, streamlines this whole process, um, and this should be a GIF, but it doesn't seem to be playing. Um, but basically, what we do when we're connecting to APIs or connecting to databases is just a process of authenticating your access to the source. And if you're a database, just creating a creating user um, on the database. And we're going to do full schema replication. We're going to interpret the data that we get back from those sources based on our, our schema diagrams. And we just deliver that data in a columnar format that's ready for analysis. Um, we actually have over 200 pre-engineered connectors now, but this is an, uh, this is a pretty extensive list of some of our most popular ones. Um, we, all the all the all the most popular database options are here, um, and then um, tons of other other sources, marketing sources here. And if there's anything that you don't see here, please get in, that, that you're interested in, please get in contact, and uh, because we prioritize connectors we built based on customer and prospect re uh, requests, and uh, we have plenty of workarounds and um, for how to connect to different sources. <laughs> And we have grown significantly in the Nordics over the last year with quite a few customers here, including in, in Denmark, with, of course, Falcon.io right here in the center. And Plio is a, is a great customer of ours in Denmark and uh, many other customers all around the Nordics. So if you are interested in learning more about Fivetran, um, you can reach out to me and you can always just do a free trial um, and begin that whenever you like. And that's a 14-day free trial at which you're able to to use five trans features. Um, so I will hand over to Nicholas to tell you a bit more about why he chose five tran and why he chose Looker. Yes, thank you very much, Nick. And uh, thank you very much, Mark, as well, for both giving a great overview of uh, what your tools are capable of. Um, I want to talk today about how we have used five trans and Looker over the past couple of years uh, to enable data-driven decision-making at Falcon. Um, and we've built this model called the data value chain that we use pretty much in every um, reporting project that, that's out there. So let me get into that and I hope it becomes clearer as we go along. Quick note about me for those who might have missed it in the beginning. So I'm the business intelligence manager at Falcon.io. I've been there for about five years now. Uh, and when I joined, we had lots of data silos and data was kind of all over the place. I, I worked for the sales operations team but fairly early on, we already realized that we wanted to centralize our data. Um, and we started looking, since we are a cloud business, we started looking at cloud solutions out there and uh, very quickly settled on, on Fivetran plus Looker to help us build a single source of truth and build a centralized supporting framework. What I will be talking about today, um, I will start with a quick intro to Falcon, who we are, what do we actually sell, and what's our business model. And then with regards to the data value chain, uh, we'll jump right into asking the right questions. And this is really an important prerequisite because if you don't start with asking a good question, you're really off to a false start and everything that comes after that won't be super relevant anymore. And then once you've asked the right question, you want to start building trust in data. Um, and this is where Fivetran comes in. Uh, and without, without having this trust in your data, uh, stakeholders, they will stop using whatever you provide for them. And it's really easy for them to just go back to keeping their own spreadsheets, keeping their own nodes, and, and you suddenly have data silos again. Now, finally, um, once you do have the trust, you want to make sure that you make the data accessible as well. And this is really where we heavily leverage Looker in combination with Fivetran um, to, uh, to be able to do so. And of course, at the end, I want to make sure that we leave some time for Q&A as well. So I see that I think the slides about Falcon have dropped out here. Um, but that's okay. I can just uh, give you a quick overview. It's not the most important part of the presentation anyway. Um, so 
Falcon.io, we are a social media, uh, we sell social media management software, and we pride ourselves on being the all-in-one suite. So if you buy into Falcon, you don't really need any other tools out there um, to manage your social media. Uh, you can do anything from publishing to listening to engaging with your customers. Uh, we recently acquired a company called Ammetric, which helps us also uh, to provide benchmarking to our customers, allowing them to compare their social media performance against that of other uh, similar brands out there. Um, we are a SaaS B2B business, um, so that means that apart from new business, uh, incoming revenue, also retention of revenue is very important. And since we are in the cloud, um, we use kind of all the usual suspects to, to manage our operations. So think of Salesforce as our CRM. We use Marketo for marketing automation, uh, Intercom, Zendesk for support, and we have Jira for product management, and then a bunch of tools as well. Uh, to kind of you know help uh, help the operation out there. That said, let's get into this data value chain. Um, so, how do you ask the right questions? What this is all about is to translate business goals into metrics. And when you think about a metric, uh, you want to make sure that they're actionable. And we have these three pointers that we always keep in mind um, to help us double check if you know the numbers we're talking about are actually useful um, once you start uh, building them up. So first and most importantly, a group metric is honest. Um, you know, you've, I think probably all of you have heard about the term vanity metrics, um, and nobody benefits from those because they ju they're just good-looking numbers that try to obfuscate the truth. But the truth can sometimes be ugly, um, and it's important that your metrics reflect that because that will instill change, uh, and that will make sure that you make the right decisions to make the number look better. A group metric is also, uh, also has accountability. And what I mean by this is that a metric should have a clear owner. And whether that's a single individual or that's a single team, uh, that doesn't really matter. But what is important is that no two entities are dually responsible for a single metric, because then it's really easy to shift away the blame. Um, and when you don't have accountability, it directly impacts your action ability as well. And finally, um, you also want to make sure that your metrics are not complex. And this is a tricky one. It's a tough balance to, to find um, because some of the most accurate metrics uh, might actually be a bit too complex for most business users to understand. If you have a brilliant data scientist who uh, uses uh, very advanced techniques to come to a compound metric that perfectly represents a certain business process, it might not be actionable at all if the business user doesn't know how to influence it. So you might want to go back to a more simpler metric, something that is a bit more present and aligned with the actual business process, because it will improve actionability. And when you're talking about decision making, actionability is really what you try to go for, because that is what allows you to make a decision. So once you have your metrics defined, um, the next step is to start building trust in data. And as I mentioned before, this is where we, uh, we use Fivetrend. Um, and we have heavily leveraged their ELP model to help us do so. So a little background on, on why we use Fivetran um, and also what made us choose Fivetran initially once uh, a couple of years ago when we did our procurement cycle. So a, a, a small shock for us was the ELP model. Um, when we were looking at the providers out there, we had in mind the traditional ETL, right? So extract, transform, load instead of extract loads and then transform. But when we, looking, when we were looking into that a bit more, we started realizing that ELT is a very powerful model because it makes reasoning about how your data ends up in your warehouse very easy. So with ELT, we know that the object infrastructure and the object architecture of Salesforce or Marketo or whatever other tool we're using is basically replicated one-on-one -on -one in our data warehouse. So it means we don't have to spend a lot of time going through the different uh, schema diagrams to figure out what the data actually looks like, because there is a good chance that it will look exactly the same as it is represented in the source tool. Uh, it's a bit little of a mind shift, at least for us, it was a bit of a mind shift to get into it, but now we heavily leverage it, because we know whenever we connect something new or whenever a new object is created in Salesforce, uh, we know exactly what it's going to look like in the data warehouse. Another important thing, and I think this is, goes for any tool you, you end up choosing, but this is where Fiverr was really good as well, is uh, the large collection of connectors. Nick already touched upon that a little bit. And I think this is a, 
this is important because it's almost like a commodity, right? If you can have the best tool in the world, but if you don't have the connectors that a company needs, you don't really provide any value anymore. Um, so we chose Firetrum because they covered all of the cloud tools we had uh, at that time, where some of the competitors, uh, they were missing one or two, uh, which then leaves a huge gap in value. Another one, more specific, is that Firetrum has a very good Marketo integration. Um, and I'm not sure how many of you have worked with the Marketo API, especially a couple of years ago. It's very hard. Uh, it's not an easy API to work with, especially to extract data in bulk. Um, and Fivetrend has spent a lot of time making sure that the API or that connector works very well. Um, so you really get this set it and forget it as they have with all their other connectors. And the set it and forget it is also really what, what makes Fivetrend stand out. Um, I always uh, like to say that I'm proud that I, I don't really have to use Fivetrend all that much. Um, I don't log into the UI very often. And when I do log into the UI, it's either to connect a new connector or it is to, uh, to troubleshoot. Um, so, you know, the less you log in, the, the better, actually. Um, and finally, there's a CSV uploader. And I put it in there because I found it very useful for ad hoc tasks. Um, because obviously, you want to try to uh, operationalize and, and model most of your BI reporting in the right way. But sometimes there will be ad hoc tasks. And every now and then, someone shoots me a list of 200 customer IDs and says, can you give me some information on these? Um, and then what I do is I can quickly plop them into a CSV, upload them in Firetrend, and now it's a table in the warehouse that I can join with the appropriate other data that we have to be able to collect additional information. So all in all, Firetrend is a super useful tool for us to build trust in data. Um, because we know that we don't really have to worry about how our data ends up in the warehouse. It's always a one-to-one -one replication of whatever is in the source. So moving on, um, making data accessible. And this is where Looker comes in. So reasons we chose Looker is we, we, we went on a trial with Firetrend and Looker at the same time. And we found that LookML is a perfect match for Firetrend's ELT model. So where Fivetrend replicates your data one-to-one -one, uh, from the source, the, the source object infrastructure might not represent your business processes one-to-one. -one. And LookML can be used to make sure that you translate the technical infrastructure of what your source data looks like into a language that your business users can speak. Um, and when you do that, uh, you can then leverage Looker's exploration engine because instead of providing users only with pre-built reports, um, you basically provide them with a way to speak their business language in a reporting tool. So if you have a data savvy user, a user out there, they can actually go in there and speak the language they know to build the reports that they want to have. Uh, and that, uh, as Nick mentioned, or sorry, as Mark mentioned early on in the presentation, that helps with these data breadlines because if you find the right people. Uh, they can take care of most of their own reporting with very little hand-holding from the BI team. Um, what's also really useful about LookML is because the modeling layer is separated from the visualization layer, a lot of changes can be made silently. And what I mean by that is, you know, as we move fast as a business, uh, we often make changes in the CRM or in Marketo or in Jira or wherever that are just needed to make our processes run smoothly. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a change to a business KPI. And through LookML, we are actually able to make those changes in the background to make sure that we can still translate the source into the business language, but the business user do doesn't actually see anything of that. So there's no downtime, and we can basically make these changes in silence and make sure that everybody can, everybody can still keep on making their own reports. And finally, uh, another thing I wanted to mention is, especially also during the trial, the, the chat support in Looker is really great. Um, they're pretty much online the entire time I'm online. I've never really had a time where they weren't. Uh, they're super quick to respond, and they usually just help you out um, and, and take care of your problem super quickly. And also during your trial. Um, so that definitely stood out as one of the things that was super beneficial to us. Then a few more notes on um, some specific things we, we do with not just Looker, actually, but Looker and Firetrend together. So I mentioned it before. We, we really heavily leverage LookML. Um, so we, we have built quite some complex processes in our systems, uh, but also just in the business as, as a whole. 
Um, and LucaMail is a very powerful tool to help us reduce the complexity for the end user, basically get rid of it altogether, keep the complexity to those people who know about it, and provide the end user just with the business language and the KPIs they're used to. And in, in a similar uh, fashion, we also focus on creating uh, simple and focused explorers. Because initially, when we started rolling out Looker, we kind of just plopped everything in one big explorer. So think of maybe a, a Salesforce Opportunities Explorer. But we realized that that actually reflects several different use cases. So you might have an Opportunities Explorer, but that is sales opportunities, that is renewal opportunities, that is account management opportunities. And all these three different business stakeholders then basically trying to fight for the, 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 the right user experience in building their own reports. So a better approach, we found, is to split them up and build and explore specifically focused on sales opportunities, specifically for your renewal base, and specifically for the performance of your account managers. And that way, every stakeholder um, has the perfect environment for them to be able to, to manage their, their own data. Um, and on that note, uh, we also found that not every stakeholder has the same engagement level. So some people are very data savvy and they really like to dig in and explore themselves. And that's great because uh, they need very little handholding. But others uh, are less data savvy and they're more data consumers. And that's completely fine. That just means you need to approach them differently. So you're not going to send an explorer to a data consumer and say, hey, you know, here's your data, have fun. You might need to work with them a little bit to really figure out what is the actual report they want. Um, and in this case, for those people, we help them build the report. We double check with them that it is what they're looking for. And then we utilize Looker to make sure that that report ends up at the right place at the right time using any of the options Luger has available to kind of spread the data. And finally, um, something that was really useful for us as well is to try to find data champions in every department or every kind of subset of stakeholders you work with. And those are people um, that are just huge fans of Luger and working with data in general. Uh, and they will take on a lot of the frontline questions that would otherwise end up with your BI team or your team of analysts. They can help people make sense of explorers. They can make certain tweaks and dashboards if needed. And it allows your BI team or your data team to build more innovative and overall just better environments for people to explore in. So when, we, when you put this all together, um, we have this mental model of the data value chain. Um, and really, it's, it's not that complex, but this is something that we just very often reference to make sure that we're still on the right track. So whenever you're working on a data project, um, try to see where you are. You know, if, are you already working on data collection? We haven't really identified the performance metrics yet. Then it's best to take a step back, right? Um, and it's good to also realize that this is a cyclical approach. So when you are successful, when you have kind of moved throughout the entire data value chain and you have made your data accessible and people are using it, they're going to make decisions. And when people make decisions, they're going to change things. And when things change, your business processes change, and you have another conversation on what that change means for their KPIs. Uh, so for us, this is a very powerful model to make sure that we keep our stakeholders engaged, that we keep our data accurate and relevant, and uh, overall that we make sure that we make the most out of the, the, the data that we have available. I want to end uh, with a real-life example. Uh, on where this all comes together. And this is a project we've run recently on uh, comparing churn risk versus our product roadmap. And what we wanted to do here, the, the question we wanted to start with was, what is the value of feature requests? Can we quantify feature requests in any sort of way? Um, and we, we decided to, to start with, we want to narrow it down even more. And we wanted to focus on the question, are there any feature requests out there for which we can quantify the exact churn risk. So what is the what value are we going to miss out on or are we going to lose if we don't deliver on this feature? So if you go back to the data value chain, that's kind of this first part, you know, identifying the, the core metric. In this case, uh, churn risk as, a, as MRR in comparison to uh, a feature requests. For the process management piece of this and the data collection piece kind of in unison, uh, we already use Jira for feature requests. We use Salesforce for managing our customers. And we added this little tool in between that provides a widget 
to connect feature requests to customers, or actually vice versa. To, for, from Salesforce, you can connect an account to a feature request. And you can either create a new one or do an existing one. And you can also specify whether this is a churn risk. In order to make this data relevant, we decided that for every customer X months before their renewal date, we'll send the CSM a reminder and say, if a customer has explicitly mentioned that they will churn if a feature is not delivered, please record that now. Um, so in our processes, we started this data collection in a kind of a, uh, an organized way. And because of five we don't really have to worry about how it ends up in the data warehouse because we know that it will be replicated one to one. And then in Looker, we could utilize the, the way this data was stored. And it was a bit tricky. Um, so in this case, the way this widget stored data in Jira was as a, a single field with a comma separated list of account IDs. And I'm not sure if there's any SQL analysts out there, but that is very nasty. So what we did and where Looker comes in and, and really helped us out here is you can write this query. So we use Amazon Redshift and you can write this query in Redshift to take those IDs and split them out and make them into a join table. Um, but you don't want to do that all the time. So we use Looker's persistent derived tables to write that query once and basically have it update anytime there's new data. And then we can bring that new view into an explorer and put it all together and provide the business user with a very simple explorer that looks somewhat like this. Now note here that uh, I've obfuscated the data a little bit. We don't actually do any 3D printing and especially not unicorns. And that's also not worth 9 million in MRR uh, up, up at, as churn risk. Um, but this is a real life explorer. So the data will actually reflect our feature requests. And what you'll see if you just look on the left, you have basically your field list. We just have two sections. We have customer feature requests and customer info. And from there, we've picked the feature request summary, um, which is basically Jira terminology for the title. And from the customer info, we have a measure, which is the sum of MRR. And another really useful dimension we used was the next renewal date. So what you see here is we filtered the customer's next renewal date, saying give us all customers that are out for renewal in fiscal 2020 Q3. Um, make sure that the feature requests we're looking at have been marked as churn risk, and then show me all features that have any kind of MRR attached to them that is a churn risk. And this is super useful for our product managers um, to figure out the product roadmap, because there's, if there's any feature that has a, significantly, a significant amount of MRR attached to it as a churn risk, we know exactly how much it's going to cost us if we don't deliver on it. So that's all I had today. Um, I guess it's time for Q&A. I hope this was useful, um, and I hope I'm able to answer any of the questions you, you still have. Great job, Nicholas. That was a fantastic presentation, and thank you so much for not only um, you know being one of our customers, uh, but for um, coming on coming on this webinar today. And I, I hope everybody here has has enjoyed the content that, that you've shown them. Um, you're absolutely right. It is time for the Q and A. Um, so we're going to screen through a couple of the questions now and start to start to take, um, I suppose, uh, the questions as they've come in. Um, I suppose I, I could start that, you know. While, while we're skimming through to make sure uh, we have relevant questions. Um, you mentioned and called out um, the Looker support, um, both in the instance as you use it on a day-to-day -day basis and in the trial as a, a kind of a standout feature. Um, you know, wh what type of questions have you, have you asked um, our, our, our customer service team uh, to, to answer for you? And uh, t typically, uh, if, you, if you could estimate their response time, what, what would it be? So the kind of question is, is the, the range is very broad. Um, in the beginning, um, it was often uh, just trying to figure out things that I didn't know yet. Um, so I might shoot them a question like, hey, what's the best way to get X done? Or, you know, is there, is there a feature that allows me to do this? Uh, and they just reply really quickly. So with response time, it's usually within a minute. Uh, it really is, is never more than that, which is great. Um, and if there is a feature, then they obviously reply really quickly with what you can actually do. Um, we've also had instances where there might be a little bug. Um, and you know, we ask support, hey, you know, is this really what's supposed to happen? And then they're always super helpful 
to uh, to either relay the uh, the bug to the product team and, and help us kind of keep track of how this is progressing. So then it will go out of the chat and they will keep you up to date through email. Uh, and sometimes it might not be a bug and then they're super helpful to explain, you know, how this actually works and maybe I, I, I was using things in, in a way that was not supposed to be uh, not oh. supposed to be that way. Some great answer for that one. Thanks very much. We have another question here. It's a, uh, this is actually a looker one, so I'll just read it out. It's, do you have to import uh, into Warehouse or can Looker query underlying tools directly, e.g. Salesforce and Google Analytics? So um, the rule of thumb with Looker is that um, typically you have to have the information centralized within your database, whether it's BigQuery, Amazon, um, Snowflake, whatever, whatever you may be using. But once it's centralized, we can access it and then and then query it directly um, using using our, our LookML SQL, SQL, SQL querying. Um, I hope that answers your question. But yes, you would have to have it centralized. Um, I think we've got a question here for, for Nicholas. So, so Nicholas, um, what other tools are you and why did you make Looker and Fivetron as the final decision? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so let's start with five trend. Kind of go down the whole flow. So from source to uh, transfer to to moving the data to eventually analyzing. So um, five trend for us, what really stood out was uh, the consistency of the data. So in some of the other competitors we looked at, um, we noticed that the data format was different for different connectors, probably indicating that different product teams working on that. But it wasn't consistent, and that, that gets really annoying um, because then you have to keep kind of a mental map of what the data format for each connector is. In Firetrain, everything was consistent. Um, also, they had the only Marketo connector at the time um, that actually worked well. Um, I'm not sure how that is now, to be honest. So th this was about three years ago that we looked at that. Uh, it's still a really good connector, so no problems with that. And also, as I mentioned early on, um, just the, the amount of connectors available uh, you want to make sure that you have coverage of all the tools you use as a business. And Firetrend basically covered all the connectors that we needed. As for Looker, um, the answer is pretty short. It's LookML. Uh, so we looked at other BI tools out there. Um, there are a lot of tools that provide an interface where you write a query, goes to your data warehouse, and then you, know, you, you get the result that can build visualizations on top of that. I think there's even tools out there that allow you to easily kind of materialize views. So you write a query uh, in SQL, and then you can use that to reference at the later point in time. But the power of LookML is that you don't have to write SQL for everything you do, is that you, you can reuse snippets you've wrote before. You can reason about data in a language that is very similar to SQL, but is much more powerful and becomes much more flexible. So that was really, there was not, 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 no other tool out there that had that same capability. And I'm happy we chose because we still have recently, heavily leveraged LookML to, uh, to get uh, to where we need to be. Perfect. I think that's, that's a fantastic summary about Fivetran and Looker. And I, I think you've done really, really, um, really well. Not another question. Um, from, I suppose, a closing remarks uh, point of view, I think um, the content you've displayed here today has, has been invaluable to those that would potentially uh, be looking at you know, Looker or Fivetran. And I personally would like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day in order to come on the webinar with you, uh, sorry, with us. Uh, and Nick, I know that you're extremely busy in Fivetran as well. So thank you very much for your time. Um, we don't seem to have any other questions uh, popping up to us at the moment. So I'll probably give you back a minute and a half. I'd like to thank everybody for dialing in to the webinar this morning. Um, thank you, Nicholas, again, from Falcon.io for your wonderful uh, webinar display um, and for being such a loyal customer to both Firefan and Looker. Everybody else, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, and we look forward to, to, to contacting you afterwards for any follow-up questions or for potentially working with us in the near future. So thank you very much, everybody, and have a wonderful day.